Problem 15-1A, which is assigned, is a great review of calculating interest expense for periods of less than a year, accruing for interest expense, and paying interest expense. Let's do 15-1B together. It's very similar to 15-1A. And up here across the top of the screen, I've laid out the time frame we're dealing with. On June 1st, this company issues $2 million worth of bonds. So we debit cash for $2 million and we credit the liability account bonds for $2 million. As of the day we issue the bonds, we don't owe any interest. But as each day goes by, interest accrues. So at the end of the first month, at the end of June, we owe one month's worth of interest. July, two months worth of interest. August, three months, etc. What the homework problem doesn't ask us to do is do the easy journal entry, that one that's on December 1st when we make the first interest payment. So if the bonds are $2 million worth of principal and the rate is 9%, that means that a year's worth of interest would be $180,000. However, we only need a half of that, so 90000 Another way to do that calculation is to say, let's take $2 million of principal times the interest rate and divide that by 12. And that will give us one month worth of interest. By the time we get to December 1st, we owe six months worth of interest. So we multiply that times six and we get the $90,000. Okay. B, prepare the adjusting journal entry to record the accrual of interest on December 31st. Well, we just paid interest on December 1st, so when we get to December 31st of 2012, we just owe one month worth of interest. So we do the same kind of calculation. Interest equals principal times rate times time. In this case, we take $2 million principal times 0 0.09 and divide it by 12 to give us one month worth of interest. Expense or debits, expense or debits, expense or debits. So we debit interest expense for $15,000 and credit interest payable, the liability account, for $15,000 to reflect the fact that we book the expense and we also owe the cash. Then it asks us to show the balance sheet presentation as of December 31st. Well, we've got some short term and some long term liabilities here. So on our balance sheet, it would look like this. Our, under current liabilities, we'd have that interest payable because that's due within one year. And we'd still owe that $2 million long term because that principal isn't due until the end of five years. Then it asks us to record the payment of interest on June 1st. So on June 1st, 2013, we're going to make that same $90,000 cash payment. But that's going to represent one month of interest left over from 2012 that we never paid. That's this $15,000. Plus five months, one, two, three, four, five months worth of interest expense for 2013. So what's that general journal look like? That entry looks like debit interest expense for 75,000. In other words, $2 million of principal times 9% divided by 12 gives us one month's worth of interest expense times five gives us five months. So that's our 2013 interest expense, 75,000. The interest payable is the $15,000 liability from last year. And we're writing the check for 90,000, just like we do every six months, we write the check for 90,000. Then it says prepare the general journal entry to do the December 1st, 2013 payment. And just like we did back in 2012, we write a check for $90,000. Interest expense is 90,000 which is that $2 million times 0 0.09 divided by 12 times six, because we owe six months worth of interest, and we debit interest expense. Since this thing doesn't overlap any years, we don't have to worry about interest payable. This is all interest expense for 2013. Now we call the bonds on that same date. At 102, that means we pay our bondholders 102% of the face amount of their bonds and they return the bonds to us. So since we paid more than the face value, we've got a loss. 
So we take the bonds, the $2 million liability from up here, and add a credit balance to zero it out. We're going to debit it for $2 million. We're going to write a check for $2,040,000. That's 102% of $2 million. Take 1.02 times $2 million, and you should get $2,040,000. To make that journal entry balance, we record a loss on bonds redemption of $40,000. And that's all there is to uh, this homework problem. Please remember, when you're calculating interest expense, if we only need interest expense for a portion of a year, you have to adjust your calculations accordingly. And I always like to start out by figuring out how, one, how much one month worth of interest is and then go from there. If we have to accrue for one, great. If we have to pay for five, great. But calculating how much one month's worth of interest is, is a handy place to start. Thanks.